we've got number theory part two, and we're going to be getting into some hardcore mathematics. So make sure you stick around and that you're fully aware. Monk and square root. You're given two integers n and m. Help Monk find an integer x such that x square percent m equals n and zero less than or equal to x. If there are multiple possible values, print the smallest one. And if there is no more possible value, print minus one. That's supposed to be negative one. Now this is a pretty straightforward question. Let's say n is four and m is five. So which value, when squared and modulo by five, gives us gives us four? That's naturally two. Two square is four. Four mod five is four. Similarly, zero and four is just going to be zero. Now make sure you read up on the properties of modulus. That's what we're going to be using to solve this problem. And once you're done, once you've tried, once you've solved it for yourself, make sure to head on back. Now, a quick 10 second intro about modulo. Even though you already know it, 10 mod 4 is going to be 2. Why? The closest multiple of 4 is 8, and the excess, the remainder, is going to be 2. Modulo essentially returns the remainder. Here we've got some random modulo. Let's just say five into seven mod three. We've got a into b mod three. We've discussed this property before. I'll link that video on the captions up above. But this property essentially tells us that a into b mod n is the same as a mod n times b mod n. Why? Five into seven mod three. Let's split each of these into their closest multiple of three and their remainder. Five we know is three plus two, seven is six plus one, the closest multiple plus the remainder. This is going to be eighteen. That's three into six plus three into one plus six into two plus two into one. The first three numbers are all multiples of three, which is why they get cancelled, and the final number mod three is our answer. Two mod three, which is two. This is the same as R one into R two mod three, where R one. Is the remainder of the first number that's a or five, and R two is the remainder of the second number that's b or seven. This is the same as five mod three times seven mod three. Five mod three times seven mod three. We know five mod three returns a remainder of two. That's R one. Seven mod three returns a remainder of one. That's R two. This is the same as R one times R two mod three, which is two mod three, which is two again. This property is going to be crucial in our solving of the problem. We can write x square mod m as x mod m times x mod m. Each of these is going to return the same remainder. That's because they're the same numbers and they're modulo by m. That's going to be remainder times remainder mod m. Now the remainder can only be a value between zero and m minus one. Those are the only numbers we have to check. All we do is run a for loop from zero to m minus one, and check if that squared mod m is equal to n. We can, however, optimize it a bit more. We don't have to go all the way from zero to m minus one. We can start a little later and end a little earlier. Suppose this was your question. Question mark mod four equals one. What's the minimum value of question mark? One is the minimum value of question mark, the minimum positive value. So question mark is greater than or equal to one. Now, if that question mark is equal to x square, which is what our question tells us, we've got to find x. So x is naturally going to be root one, greater than or equal to root one. So we do not have to start from zero. We can instead start from root n. We can also shift our endpoint down by a bit. If you have a look at your screens right here, see something pretty curious. Let's have a look at mod five. So all the numbers less than or equal to five are zero, one, two, three, four, five. Zero squared mod five is zero. One squared mod five is one. Two squared mod five is four. Three squared mod five is four. Four squared mod five is one, and five squared mod five is zero. It's following a pattern. The first three numbers are zero, one, four, and the next three numbers are four, one, zero. The same pattern but reversed. This is true for any number, where whatever pattern emerges until m by two, until the first m by two numbers is reversed. 
So the same set of numbers are present from 0 to m by 2 and from m by 2 to n, which is why we only have to check the first m by 2 numbers. We can shift our endpoint down to m by 2. Why does this work? Say you've got 1 squared mod 6 and 5 squared mod 6. 1 squared is nothing but 0 plus 1, 0 plus 1. 5 squared, 6 minus 1, 6 minus 1. In general, it's going to be 0 plus r1 and n minus r1. This is nothing but an a plus b whole squared expansion. That's going to be a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. a squared is 0, b squared is 1, 2ab is 0. a squared and 2ab both have a in it, a being 0, meaning both of them are going to get cancelled out. So our final answer is only going to be b squared, which is 1 mod 6, which is 1. Similarly, here we're going to have a minus b whole squared. That's a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. Here a is going to be n itself. So naturally, a squared is going to be multiple of n. So 36 mod 6 will give us 0. Minus 2ab is going to be a multiple of n. Minus 12 is a multiple of 6. So that gives us 0 as well. So all we're left with is b squared mod 6, which is 1. This is why that property works, the property we just discussed, where squares repeat themselves after m by 2. All that's left to do is to have a look at the code. We simply run a loop from the square root of m. I think I've mixed up m and n in this question. I've swapped them. But we run a loop from the square root of m to n by 2 plus 1. If i squared percent n equals m, all we do is print i and we end all our iterations, we break. If we've never encountered that i value, that means no such number exists, so we simply print minus one. Once we hit compile, once we hit test, it works and submit is gonna give us a pretty favorable result as well. As you can see right here. Guys, that's been the solution to number theory, the second problem in number theory. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit the three buttons and I will see you next time.